are listening to the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. On today's program, we're going to talk about recent discoveries in science, biology, and physics, which prove that inside of our human bodies, we have energy, biological energy, some say spiritual energy, whatever the origin of this energy is, every man and woman is a container of some kind of energy. And when utilized properly, even someone who is a non-believer can use that energy for healing, for gaining wisdom above and beyond normal human wisdom. In other words, we could call this this energy uh, that God has placed in all men and women uh, the life force. Now, I don't mean life force in the sense of uh, some occultic teaching, because I've heard that that term applied to occultic mystical teachings. But those in the New Age and the occult and things like that, they don't have a monopoly on life force. Life force is something that God created. We first read about life source in the book of Genesis in the Old Testament when God breathed his life into both Adam and Eve, which comes from the word ruah, which essentially means life force. So you see, when God was creating Adam and Eve, he breathed into them the life of God or the life force of God. And that allowed their physical, emotional, psychological being to to come alive. Now, What is also interesting was that this life force um, was at its apex at every moment that Adam and Eve lived in paradise inside the Garden of Eden. This apex of life force was the fact that they were one with God. There was no separation between them and God. Therefore, the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit, the dunamis power of God, filled them and caused them to be alive and caused them to have eternal life and caused them to think at their maximum potential, act at their maximum potential, create. Everything they did, everything they thought was at the God-given maximum potential. As such, they lived the abundant life in the Garden of Eden. And everything they did, uh, they were fruitful and multiplied. This is God's plan for mankind. We can never we can never review this powerful truth often enough. It's simple, but it's powerful. The Garden of Eden was paradise. It was like heaven on earth. Adam and Eve, before they uh, rejected the law of God, had eternal life living in them. They were one with God. They had no sickness. They had no disease, no poverty, no sin nature. It was heaven on earth. And on top of that, Adam and Eve had a deeply close and personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Not in some religious way, but Jesus Christ actually walked with them, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden and talked with them. And they, they, they had a very tight friendship. No, no, no religious filter. And that's why when they disobeyed God, the only commandment that God gave them regarding the Garden of Eden was this. God said to them, don't eat from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. For in the day that you do, you shall surely die. And it was there that Lucifer, in a reptilian form, and Lucifer was the highest ranking angel, super creative, a super genius, and he enticed, using what is called the wiles or the strategies or the schemes of the devil, which actually could be translated as a supernatural form of mind control, hypnosis, putting them into a trance state. Don't get me wrong, 
they they were fully conscious of the fact that they made the choice to listen to uh, the devil through the serpent. That was a willful, conscious choice. And it was done because Lucifer or Satan is a master manipulator. He, he knows how to mix lies with truth. He knows how to utilize propaganda uh, and persuasion and things like that. It's just like part of his raw talent. So he, so he mixed just enough truth with a lie to make it palatable for Eve, and he convinced Eve that God was holding out on them, and that when they really ate of this fruit in the middle of the garden, they wouldn't surely die, but that they would become like gods, knowing the difference between good and evil. And what happened was, when they disobeyed the Lord, listened to Lucifer, and they ate of the tree, ate of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, instantaneously, like God said, they flipped this great cosmic trigger, this great cosmic switch called, they activated the law of sin and death. Pow! Instantaneously, in a nanosecond, they activated the law of sin and death, and um, this caused the death force to permeate every part of their being, but it also released the death force to totally infuse itself in the Garden of Eden, in the world, in everything God created, and in their physical bodies and their souls and their spirits. So, seconds later, after activating the law of sin and death and causing the death force to, to uh, infuse them, they are experiencing things that they've never experienced before. First of all, they are both experiencing fear. They never experienced fear before. They had uh, anxiety and worry and fear. They knew that they were naked, so they had this deep sense of shame before God. Prior to that, they were in a state of innocence. They didn't know they were naked. Most likely, they were clothed with the glory of God. But when you introduce unbelief and sin into the midst of the glory of God, it causes it to dissipate. And then sickness and disease and rebellion and and all creation began to crumble. Uh, the entire world was transformed and eaten on so many myriad levels. Everything from the animal kingdom, which before the fall, animals lived peacefully together. Now animals were hunting each other down and eating each other. This never happened before the fall. There was no fear of, of lions and tigers and stuff like that because everything lived in harmony. There was no death. There was no tearing into human flesh. There was no rape or pedophilia or greed or war or all the other things that very quickly manifested from uh, mankind's fallen nature because they were now infused with the death force. And on top of that, because they activated the law of sin and death, they were in the process of degrading biologically the second they ate from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. They began dying, and uh, they began getting older. And the inescapable proof that they had activated the law of sin and death and brought a curse on themselves was the fact that every man and woman born through them and from that time afterwards is born into sin, has a fallen human nature, and is always uh, moving and degrading and degenerating towards death and sickness and disease. It's inescapable. Now, what caused that? Well, the primary cause is disobedience of God's word, because when you obey God's word, because God is the supreme being, he blesses those who believe his word, have faith in his word, and act upon his word. 
there is an instantaneous blessing. Conversely, once you reject God's word through unbelief and you disobey God's word, you instantaneously bring a curse upon yourselves, your world, everything around you, your children, your grandchildren. Instead of God's blessing, you are now living under a curse because sin always brings a curse. Disobedience to God's word always brings a curse. And um, the punishment for sin, and what is sin? Sin is simply missing the mark, the perfect target of God's will for our lives. Even if it's uh, a very microscopic deviation from the target, which is 100% obedience to the law of God, that may be a microscopic level of disobedience, but it still is described as metanoia, or missing the mark, which is complete holiness and righteousness. And as a result, whenever the death force is activated in a person's life in a generational line, the automatic punishment for sin is death. Death is the penalty for sin. And this is a heavy thing, but you're talking about this is the result of what happens when human nature rejects God's word, sins, and the result is always the same. You, you literally uh, unplug the life force of God, the blessing of God, which keeps everything going perfectly, and you activate the law of sin and death, and what it causes is a vast internal and external degradation, deterioration, falling apart, um, and a complete collapse of everything that God has created. And so, this death force is highly destructive, both in the universe, the animal kingdom, in mankind, in weather, in everything. But that was never God's intention for mankind. That's why Jesus sent his son in the fullness of time to be the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world to take the penalty of our sin upon him. And the penalty is very clear. When we are simply born into sin by being the genetic descendants of Adam and Eve, we are guaranteed that we will die. Why? Because we're born into sin. We have a fallen nature, and the penalty for sin is always death. The only way around that is not by performing a bunch of good works or doing all these religious things. The only way around that is to believe God and God's Word, which teaches us that the only way you can uh, escape or de- deactivate the law of sin and death is to come to God and ask him for forgiveness. And based on the blood of Jesus Christ, which is poured out to cleanse us of all sins, when we activate that blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ, to cleanse us of all sins by faith. And when we ask God for forgiveness, God will cleanse us of all sin, past, present, and future, when we ask him to, and put our faith in what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross when he took the penalty of sin and death upon himself, and he died and then resurrected from the dead, breaking the power of sin and death over any person who puts their faith in Christ. And then when a person obeys God by faith and invites Jesus Christ into their lives and asks Jesus to come inside their lives and make them born again, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, comes into their inner man or woman, regenerates them from within inside, makes them a new creature in Christ Jesus, a new man or a new woman, And now, by faith, you are born again, 
your sins are forgiven, and you have a new nature, you now have eternal life, and you are guaranteed entrance into heaven. And even if your physical physical body dies here on earth, you will, at the time of your death, be absent from your physical body when you die, but you will be in the presence of the Lord in heaven, an eternal world, in your brand new eternal and glorified body. And that will be the true paradise, the true restoration of the Garden of Eden, plus much, much more forever and ever. Now, that's what everything really is all about. So, we have the death force produced by disobedience to God's word, sinning, and activating the law of sin and death. We have the life force, which is eternal life, and again, not a cultic life force, but the life force from the source of all true life, which is Jesus Christ. The life force brings life. It causes fruitfulness and multiplication as God intended it to be. And that's why when he says, be fruitful and multiply, and, and he, after every commandment God makes and everything God creates in the book of Genesis, you always read that God speaks it into existence, and that in and of itself contains an overwhelmingly powerful message that the infinite personal living God of the universe has chosen in his supreme authority he chose to create the universe through his spoken word. Now, that is not just, you know, like some glitch on, on a computer screen uh, of the kingdom of heaven. It's, it's, it's a revelation of the primary understanding about how God's creation works. So, for example, in Genesis 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, and um, verse 2, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. And so we see everything that God creates through his spoken word, he then says, it is good. So, God, who is the supreme being, could have chosen any methodology to create heaven and earth and mankind and the world and the animal kingdom and so on and so forth. But he chooses to speak it into existence through his command. In other words, through his word, he creates everything. Now, this is not, you know, a little peripheral issue. This is where we get right into the ground zero of God's truth. Science calls this the uh, law of cymatics, and cymatics is the scientific theory that the that the universe and the world were created by sound. It's not necessarily a Christian science. It's not really taught by Christian scientists. It's just that there is a significant number of physicists and biologists and other scientists who have come to the conclusion through their intensive study of how the world and mankind were created they have discovered that mankind in the world was created by sound. And they make reference to the fact that the Word of God teaches us God spoke the world into existence. So they prioritize what is called the Word or sound as perhaps the highest level of creative energy. It's not just some trivial thing that God spoke the world into existence. And then, as we read the book of Genesis, God creates man. So, in Genesis 1.26, then God said, notice that he speaks man into existence. 
Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish, fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Again, this is extremely powerful. So God speaks, and when it says, let us create man in our own image, us refers to the triune nature of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then he says, let us make man in our image. So we're a triune being also. And then God says, let them, that's male and female, uh, people, human beings, let them have dominion over the sea, over the birds, of, of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So right here, it tells us that the intention of God, the plan of God from the very beginning, was to make men and women created in the image of God, uh, the, 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 for lack of better words, the, kings, the king and queen of planet earth, under the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ. He makes man the Creator under the Creator, capital C. It's not that man is God, it's that God has given man many God-like attributes, and he has supernaturally given the world and everything the world contains to be ruled by the first man and woman, Adam and Eve. So we were created in our DNA, to, to, to have the power to rule and reign over everything on earth. Not to be the victims or the slaves of everything on earth, but right from the beginning it says we're to rule and reign over everything on planet earth. Now, let's think about that for a moment. God creates the world for Adam and Eve as paradise, as heaven on earth. And then he gives Adam and Eve the supernatural power to rule and reign and have dominion over planet Earth. This is very, very important in understanding who you really are deep, deep down inside, what your genetic code, because you're made from the DNA of God, reveals to you about yourself is that you are made in the image of God and you were designed to rule and reign. This is a critical, non-negotiable truth. And God further says, with, with intention, intentionality, he says, um, we're to... Uh, be made in God's image and likeness, we're to have dominion over the fish of the sea, and then he says, and we're to have dominion over all the earth and every everything that creeps on the earth. Now, God uh, writes his word. It's inspired and inerrant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Words just don't casually appear in the, in, in the word without a specific reason. What God is saying to us here is that from the beginning, mankind was given um, dominion and authority over all the earth, but specifically over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So what is God talking about? What is the creeping thing that creeps on the earth? Well, God is specifically using that passage of Scripture to tell us that he has given Adam and Eve and mankind, when mankind is in a right relationship with God, to have dominion and authority over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And he is making specific reference, make no mistake about it, to Genesis chapter 3, and he is saying that we are supposed to have dominion and rulership over the serpent of old, which represents Satan. Because the serpent of old is a creature that is a creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. 
So God is reminding us in Genesis 2 that we are to rule and reign over Satan and the demonic powers. So when it says in verse 3, not verse 3, chapter 3, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And, of course, he mixes truth with lies. That's called propaganda. The the strategies or wiles of the devil. You see, the devil, we have to understand who the devil is. He's the highest-ranking fallen angel. God embedded him with with godlike capacities for business, entrepreneurship, genius, creativity, music, art, visual. Lucifer is a very, very powerful uh, angel and being. And the f- same attributes that Lucifer manifested before he fell are the same attributes he uses to dominate and control man to this very day. Lucifer, as we study his biography and we study the account in Genesis, Lucifer is a super genius when it comes to mind control, mind games, the wiles of the devil, manipulation, brainwashing, putting people into a trance, hypnotizing them, programming their minds, This is not just coincidence. This is the name of the game of what Satan is all about. And God's trying to give us a heads up. So, we see that when when Lucifer makes an appeal to the woman in the form of the serpent, he twists the truth. He adds a little bit of truth and mixes it with a lie. That's the same agenda that Lucifer uses Every time he's trying to promote one of his programs, his ideologies, his political uh, plans, his plans for world domination, always by mixing truth with a lie, always by mixing truth with a lie, and then programming people, along with his supernatural power, to believe the lie. It's heavy stuff. And if you'd wake up to it, as the church is intended to wake up to it, you can be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus and take down the liar and the armies of the liar. So we see that God is telling us way up front, you're supposed to have authority over every creeping thing on the earth. He's referring to the serpent, Satan. Okay? In fact, when we read Genesis 3... Um, we read in verse 13, um, Adam is blaming the whole problem on Eve. And Adam says, And the Lord God said to the woman, or now he's questioning the woman, And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, And more than every beast of the field, on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust. And all the days of your life I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, capital S. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Now what is God talking about? God is talking about what is going to happen as a result of their disobedience. But he's specifically describing the serpent uh, as a creature that has been cursed. Uh, and this creature uh, is, is destined by God to crawl on his belly and eat dust all the days of your life. You see, he's the creeping thing that we're supposed to have dominion over, not vice versa. Very important to understand what God's what God's program is. And so, um, in verse 15, when God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, 
He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. What does that mean? The word head means rosh. To the serpent, God said, He shall bruise your head, which speaks prophetically of the triumph of Christ over Satan. The word head refers to the head of the line. What is the principal or supreme, first, top, the highest part, summit, beginning, foremost leader and chief, just as the head of a company refers to its chief person, Rosh is used to show headship. In Genesis 3.15, the promise is that the seed of the woman would someday crush the serpent's head. That woman, in particular, would play a part in undoing the effects of the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. The seed, capital S, Jesus Christ, has trampled on Satan at the cross, and the redeemed human race will eventually triumph over the evil one. So this is powerful stuff, man. So, man falls because he disobeys God. And again, notice that um, in, in Genesis 2, uh, it says, verse 5, Before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. But mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now, This is very, very important. God composed us of the same components that he used to compose the dust of the earth. That means the earth and the soil contain all the chemicals and minerals and other matter from which man can be composed of. But then what makes man alive is God forms the man out of the dust of the ground But what makes man alive is when God breathes his life force into the man and the woman and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life or life force, and then man became alive, a living being. So this this understanding of the life force of God, which comes from the spirit of God, the ruah, is literally breathed into Adam and Eve and they become alive. This is critical to understand. It's the difference between making robots and androids and creating a living living human being in the image of God. So, what happens? The curse, a law of sin and death, the death force, is now dominating the world, and Satan has become the temporary god or ruler of this world. So, this means that the world is under a curse. It's no longer under the rulership of Adam and Eve who were walking in a right relationship with God. It's under the it's under the rulership of Lucifer, who is the highest ranking angel who is leading a regime change against God. He's leading a revolution against God and his throne with one third of the angels, the demons with all men and women that have chosen to follow Lucifer and uh, the powers of darkness. And he wants to conquer God, destroy God, kill God, and set himself up on a throne to be worshipped as God. And this is where the entire Bible is pointing. So in the book of Revelation, we see uh, the realization of Lucifer's plan in that In the last days, which we are entering into now, this one world government, one world religion, one world economic system, or Mystery Babylon, is formed. It's what the elite globalists are doing. And the world is going to have a one world government, a one world religion, and a one world economic system. And the one world economic system will be a cashless society where nobody can buy or sell 
without getting the nanochip or biochip implant called the Mark of the Beast, a cashless currency that will be totally run by the false prophet who is also head of the uh, satanic one world religion. And the Antichrist, also known as the first beast, and the false prophet is known as the second beast, the Antichrist, uh, will demand to be worshipped as God as he sets himself up uh, on the throne of God inside the newly rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. The Antichrist will go into the rebuilt temple of God in Jerusalem and demand that the entire world worship him as God. And uh, if they do not, he will kill them. And part of how this works is nobody can buy or sell without receiving the mark of the beast, 666, 666, this technology. And if anybody refuses to receive the mark of the beast, and in order to receive the mark of the beast, you must vow to worship the Antichrist as God, and you must publicly profess that you renounce Jesus Christ as Lord. You must sell your soul to get the mark of the beast. The problem is, every person who chooses to receive the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell, when Christ returns at the battle of Armageddon with the armies of heaven, every man and woman that accepted the mark of the beast will be assigned to go into the lake of fire with the Antichrist, with the false prophet, and with Satan, because they have chosen to worship the Antichrist as God, and they have renounced Jesus Christ as Lord. Their eternal destiny is uh, the lake of fire, eternally. Now, all those who chose to reject the mark of the beast, and refused to acknowledge that the Antichrist was God, and were faithful in professing that Jesus Christ is Lord, they will not get the mark of the beast. They will be instantly beheaded down here on earth, but then instantaneously they will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. They will have eternal life and it will happen so fast that it's going to be in the blink of an eye, and they will be in their glorified bodies, worshiping God as the saints of God forever and ever, and they will have uh, been guaranteed heaven in their brand new bodies forever and ever. So these are heavy dynamics. So now we live in a world where the death force is rampant, Lucifer and the demonic powers have been ruling empire after empire, and we are coming to the time that Daniel spoke of in the last days where many will run to and fro, and knowledge will vastly increase. That means because we're in the last days, knowledge of technology, science, medicine, uh, all kinds of sciences and understanding Will, will exponentially grow among mankind. New inventions, new technologies, man, the, the, the understanding and science of man will just explode to a level we've never seen before. But also the seals will be taken off God's word and we will have the revelation and an understanding of God's word on a level we've never had before because we're now in the last days. So knowledge will explode to and fro all across the earth among God's people in their understanding of the word, and among all people, if they seek after knowledge, God will reveal to them uh, all kinds of science and technologies, giving man uh, a knowledge and a wisdom above and beyond anything mankind has ever experienced. And mankind will run to and fro about the earth, which means jet travel and other forms of high-speed travel will be the norm. And that's the society that we live in at this very moment. We live in the future. You know, when I was a kid, I was a big science fiction book fan. 
And guess what? For the most part, everything I read about in these science fiction novels by Isaac Asimov, Robert Heinlein, oh, and so many others, uh, it's, not science, it's not science fiction anymore. Science fiction has become a reality. And what most people don't understand is that there are technologies in existence now, sciences in existence now, uh, computers, androids, robots, weapons, uh, uh, all kinds of scientific, technological, psychological knowledge that is available and in use now that the vast majority of people on planet Earth, they don't believe this high-level futuristic technology and science exists. They think it's still not going to come for another 50 to 100 years. And I hate to pop people's balloons, but we are living in a time when the technology that most people think is going to come in 50 to 100 years has been here in various stages of development for the last 25 or 50 years. And even at the current place we are in the history of the world, Secretly, governments and laboratories and scientists around the world are utilizing and operating technology and all kinds of sciences that if you were to try to explain it to the average person, they would say, oh, no, that's impossible. We won't be able to do that for another 50 to 100 years. No, they're mistaken. We're doing it now. It's just that most people have been dumbed down and, they, and they, they can't comprehend the obvious. Uh, we are doing these in futuristic sciences now. Now is the future, and we need to recognize that. That's what the Bible is talking about. That's what God is trying to wake us up to when he says, in the last days, knowledge will vastly increase, and men and women will run to and fro across planet Earth. He means exactly what he says. We're in the future. This is the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. This is the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. We were talking about the fact that there currently exists now all kinds of technologies and science and scientific developments that are fully operational now. They're not far off in the future. We've been using them in various stages for 50, 25 years. And at the current moment, there is an enormous amount of technology, science, and understanding that most people think is in the realm of science fiction. It won't be available to us for another 50 to 100 years. Well, they're completely wrong. They've been dumbed down by the educational system, and they can't see the obvious, which is all around them. We live in a time, and the only way you can deal with reality as an overcomer and fulfill the mission that God has for you is you must have a correct appraisal of of what reality really is. And reality is now what most people think is science fiction. In other words, we really do live in a world where technology, science, and all kinds of understanding is, a, is being applied now. But most people think it, it won't be available for 50 to 100 years. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's here. It's been here for a long time. It, it, we don't have to wait 50 to 100 years. I'll get into it, some of that, in just a little bit. One quick way uh, you can uh, perceive this And you'll notice that I use the word perception a great deal in my teaching and and writings. Because, you see, perception and intelligence go hand in hand. Also, consciousness and intelligence and perception go hand in hand. We live, because we do really do live in in the future, um, things like the scientific dictatorship, which was a concept developed by Aldous Huxley, a member of the elite British Royal Societies, uh, a famous uh, scientist, 
uh, a highest ranking member with British intelligence during World War, War, World War I, personally trained by the science fiction author H.G. Wells, who was the head of British intelligence in World War I. And he introduced, by the way, the Huxley brothers and other elite uh, British intelligence agents and directors to people like Aleister Crowley, where they where they studied satanic magic as a science, not as a as as a mythology. And um, the British uh, scientists like Huxley came up with a master plan which was called The Scientific Dictatorship, which he outlined in his book, Brave New World. And he basically said that the globalist elite, who are the rulers of mankind because they're genetically superior, and this was a concept developed by um, the Greek philosopher uh, Plato, who, who believed that the legendary island of Atlantis was not legendary, that it was real. And he believed from research that he had that the super civilization on Atlantis was ruled by ten god kings or philosopher kings. And that uh, Atlantis was destroyed in this great flood. But the point is, is that the elite, the globalist elite today, regularly study... um, the Greek philosopher Plato, his, his writings on Atlantis, because they have embraced this idea that a, uh, a highly intelligent elite, a scientific elite of philosopher kings or god kings, because they're smarter and genetically superior, they have the right to rule over all of society uh, because of their superior intellectual developments. And the elite uh, have embraced this because, of course, it gives credence to their belief that they're genetically superior. And this scientific elite is ruling over every major nation on planet Earth via what's called the deep state, uh, the shadow government, and uh, other such words where there exists a government behind the government that rules Governments, and this is also known as the globalist elite. Now, Huxley said that the most effective way to exercise this kind of control over mankind was to develop the scientific dictatorship versus like the old fashioned primitive uh, dictatorship of uh, Hitler with his guns and bombs and torturing people or the old-fashioned dictatorships of Stalin and Mao, where they slaughtered hundreds of millions of people. Um, It's not that Huxley is above using brute force, because he isn't, and his fellow elite members are certainly not, uh, uh, they certainly don't object to using brute force. But Huxley said, in the truly effective scientific dictatorship, men can be programmed and brainwashed Men and women can be brainwashed to love their slavery and their duties as slaves. And in fact, Huxley said, through proper scientific brainwashing, you can absolutely convince the population who are slaves that they are totally not slaves. You can brainwash them into thinking they're 100% free and that they're totally happy in their slavery because they can't see that they're slaves. They, they, they are under the trance-like state of scientific mind control, and they've been indoctrinated and programmed through a variety of technologies, sciences, pharmaceutical drugs, uh, sound technologies, and much more into thinking that they're free men and women who have arrived at their own independent ideas, when in fact all of the ideas and thinking they have about themselves, their identities, their purpose on life, their station in life, what society is all about, economics, and the entire thing, these none of the things they believe are original thoughts. 
They've all been programmed into them by sophisticated mind control that is based on scientific principles of indoctrination and programming, such as repetitive messages in music, uh, subliminal messages in music, propaganda messages in um, film and television and theater and books uh, and radio and hit songs and political speeches and con- it's constantly going so the the basic formula for scientific mind control was developed by the Nazi scientist uh, during Nazi Germany under Adolf Hitler and it, it, it flowed from a, the secret occult societies of Germany like the Vril Society, the Thule Society and other societies <clears throat> where they mix science, technology, and various satanic beliefs that incorporated genetics and a belief in a master race, access to uh, interdimensional supernatural power, science, and technology, and um, oh, genetic breeding of a master race, and uh, genetic... Um, the science of eug- eugenetics, where you you weed out the undesirables or the inferior population groups, and you uh, genetically engineer <clears throat> for the superior, what you deem to be superior racial groups and population groups to flourish. That's why the Rockefeller uh, fortune financed Margaret Sanger. Her primary goal was to set up abortion clinics in minority neighborhoods and to kill off the excessive, what she called the excessive population growth of African Americans, Hispanics, or any other racial ethnic group which she and the other elite deemed to be inferior. At the same time that she was exterminating people in the abortion clinics, uh, the eugenics program of the Rockefellers uh, was used <clears throat> to selectively breed a master race. And Adolf Hitler utilized these ideas by Rockefeller and Sanger, and he incorporated them in Nazi Germany. And Nazi Germany became the world's first DNA digital dictatorship. And the primary reason that Adolf Hitler and the Nazis killed in concentration camps over 8 million people, uh, perhaps 6 million or more were Jews, and the other uh, several million who were killed could have been Protestants, people with mental disorders and diseases, alcoholics, uh, gay people, or anybody that the Nazis... uh, identified as an inferior race. And then Hitler ordered the uh, start of the Letters Born program, which was a scientific eugenics program in Nazi Germany where they gathered hundreds of thousands of blonde-haired, blue-eyed, or light-skinned Nordic uh, young teenage men and women Uh, They checked their DNA to see if they came from what was called the Aryan race or the master race. And then they had these great parties and camps where they were encouraged to be sexually promiscuous and breed and make as many babies as possible that were part of this Aryan Nordic uh, god race that Hitler believed in. And you can still see the genetic, uh, the genetic evidence of that program. I'm not saying this is the case of all people who have these features, but I'm saying there's a certain there's certain uh, genetic traits that can be observed that one rightfully ask <clears throat> were these children the offspring of the letters born program where they selectively bred the most light skinned blonde, brown, reddish haired <clears throat> men and women with either blue eyes or 
hazel eyes or green eyes or whatever. And uh, they had them breed with like-minded, not like-minded, like with breed with others in the same genetic pool. <clears throat> well, the result was you would see this proliferation of babies all over Europe who were almost albino-like in their light skin, <clears throat> their very light uh, hair, blondish, almost grayish hair. And another characteristic these uh, special, especially bred children had was their eyes were like a grayish blue with very, very white skin. And you see those kinds of people. It doesn't mean they're necessarily part of it, but... And I'm not saying this to disparage this particular gentleman, but in my book, uh, A Prophecy of the Future of America, I did a, a great deal of research on uh, the WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange. And one cannot blame Julian Assange for what his mother did or his parents did. And so I'm not saying this to cast aspersions on him, but it's you know, the research him clearly indicates that he was a product of the Letters Born program, where his, pra- pa- where his parents obviously breeded in this uh, master race eugenics program set up by Adolf Hitler. That doesn't mean that Assange is, is a Nazi or that his parents were even Nazis. It was just something you had to do uh, if you wanted to live in Nazi Germany. And then you dig deeper in his past, and he ends up in Australia. I believe it's Australia. <clears throat> and his mother, and I guess his father, have all of their young boys and girls who eerily look like him genetically. The girls and, and the boys are all white, white skin, uh, gray, grayish blue eyes, uh, uh, light hair that's blonde, almost white, white, gray, like white, albino looking, and uh, it's an unusual uh, family portrait, but they were uh, part, and again, this is not Julian Assange's choice, but they were part of a a Nazi letters-born cult run by a woman that was deeply involved in uh, uh, master race German occultism. And uh, I don't know exactly what went on on the commune or whatever or cult that he lived on, but they were taking massive doses of psychedelic drugs and everything else as very young children, which leads one to believe that they were an attempt was made to program them or, or condition them using MK Ultra type experiments and. Uh, uh, other Nazi behavior modification techniques. This doesn't mean that Assange is evil. It just means this is the reality of what goes on and still goes on. And let's remember that the the technology of scientific mind control and brainwashing that uh, Aldous Huxley spoke of has been incorporated all throughout the United States, all throughout Europe, many other countries in the world. But it was Adolf Hitler and the Nazi rocket scientists, the Nazi genetic scientists, and the Nazi um, uh, mind control scientists, who were the ones who developed MKUltra, which is the the radical mind control programming, where you create Manchurian candidate assassin types, where you create beta sex kitten slaves for espionage. There's so many movies made uh, that allude to this now. It's, it's almost ridiculous. You know, the Born Identity movies are all based on this. There's the movie with Tom Cruise's wife, I forgot her name, uh, Red Sparrow or something, and the entire movie is based on this female uh, Russian Manchurian candidate program where she's trained to be like a beta sex slave, which means she is, she is under mind control and conditioning to not only be like a super soldier, but she has heightened powers of, of sexual seduction, et cetera, et cetera, where she was trained in this by the Russian, uh, uh, you know, KGB. Because females, especially 
uh, in the spy business in all nations are uh, there are always certain divisions that develop a young female's sexuality to be used as a tool of spying and getting information, et cetera, et cetera. And often those tools go hand in hand with this super soldier type thing where you see the born identity and all these other movies of these super soldiers. They they have heightened awareness. They can take on ten men. They they're expert marksmen. They're they have genius IQs. Well <clears throat> this flew out not flew flew out, this flowed out of the Nazi mind control program. MK Ultra was developed by the Nazi scientists and MK Ultra uh, was based on the brainwashing formula uh, that Huxley was aware of called pain, drugs, and hypnosis. So when you uh, want to uh, control somebody's mind uh, through MK Ultra, you first of all subject them to horrific pain, psychological shock of all kinds to split their personality and break it down. Then you amplify this by the use of the most powerful mind-altering drugs known to man, specifically massive doses of LSD. And then you use the pain, the drugs, and the hypnosis to place somebody in a hypnotic and trance state, very deep. And when they're in hypnotic trance and uh, trance state, um, you can then go, go directly to their subconscious. You can give them new identities, new new memories. You can super amplify or give them all kinds of superhuman abilities, like they'll master seven languages. They'll have advanced degrees in physics or mathematics and computer science or botany. Um, they have enhanced seduction skills and martial arts and fighting skills. They're, they're, they're super soldiers. And they can be Manchurian candidates where uh, they can be programmed to kill somebody or some buddies, and, and it will be activated by some kind of hypnotic command. And uh, they will go into an altered personality uh, uh, assassinate who they're supposed to assassinate, not even remember what they did, and withdraw back into another personality. And that's where the movie Manchurian Candidate got the, 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 the title from. So th these sciences, by the way, have been up and running since 1947. So when our intelligence agencies, like the CIA, uh, under the first director of the CIA, Alan Dulles, brought into America, with the help of Rockefeller, over 10,000 very high-level Nazi rocket scientists, Nazi uh, genetic scientists, and Nazi mind control scientists. Um, our government, under secret programs, especially Operation uh, Bluebird, which brought them into the country, they placed these high, high-level Nazi scientists at the heads of prestigious think tanks, university laboratories, funded vast secret experiments on military bases, and basically gave them hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to, to uh, continue to carry on their dark, dark research into these forbidden and illegal areas. Everything from rocket science to mind control science to genetic science. And uh, they created the Super Soldier Program and Manchurian Candidate Program and many other things. And this, although they deny it, uh, many people believe that these programs are ongoing programs. So that's just one aspect where you're creating for the purpose of espionage and spying and, and counterintelligence and stuff programmed individuals, but you can use this same scientific methodology of programming people like computers to make them Olympic athletes, to raise them up to uh, theoretically become presidents or vice presidents or occupy a high political office. You can 
program them to achieve uh, super excellence in any field, whether it's science, uh, literature, uh, being a, 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 a you know a, a hero or star in popular culture, um, the the vast spectrum of uh, individuals who have been secretly scientific programmed to to rise to be leaders of corporations and cultures and all kinds of things would blow most people's minds if they knew exactly what was going on. Now, this needs to be said. Why? Because these same methodologies of mass mind control were adapted to be used on the general youth population of the United States and Great Britain and in many other nations for specific periods of time to accomplish certain uh, uh, goals. Number one is the entire counterculture of the 1960s, 1970s with the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, The Who, The Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, the influx of millions and millions of doses of free LSD that was mysteriously distributed at rock and roll concerts and college campuses across the nation while Timothy Leary would speak and promote LSD. Ken Kesey of the Merry Pranksters would promote LSD on a psychedelic bus. Um, um, let's see, Ken Kesey was off, also author of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and Ken Kesey was like the LSD guru for the counterculture. He was the guru for the Grateful Dead, uh, Jefferson uh, uh, Starship, and many other rock and roll bands. And what they were doing is using, distributing, you know, millions of doses of free LSD to the youth culture. At the same time, they were playing uh, music, rock and roll music, that was deliberately scientifically embedded with subliminal messages, uh, messages that could be perceived by the conscious mind, uh, symbols that would go into the subconscious. And through the repetition of these lyrics over and over again, both subliminally and consciously, on a select number of rock and roll hit songs that would be played over and over again all across the United States on a select number of AM and FM rock and roll stations, what you have is the entire counterculture generation being exposed to the, the, the exact same formula for Nazi MK Ultra mind control. You have pain, shock, drugs, and hypnosis. So with the counterculture, you have the shock to an entire generation of a president being brutally killed on television, having his head blown off. That was shock and trauma to an entire generation. You saw the endless hours of uh, our American dead soldiers coming back from the Vietnam War. And uh, Martin Luther King being uh, tragically murdered and all kinds of social upheaval and violence in the streets. You know, the deaths at Kent State University and uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. Now that... Uh, could be categorized as the pain or shock element of mass mind control, which causes disorientation. It causes a disassociative state, which is a prerequisite to scientific mind control. Then you super amplify those experiences by dosing the entire counterculture uh, culture, both in America and around the world, with the single most powerful mind control drug ever developed in the history of mankind, specifically known as LSD. This LSD is distributed free by millions and millions, if not tens of millions of doses all across the U.S. and the world to young people. So you've got the shock, the drugs... And now you've got the, the LSD mind-blowing drug 
part of the brainwashing process. And then the finalization process in mind control is when you've shocked them, when you've blown their minds with acid, when they're in a high state and their minds are being bombarded with repetitive subliminal commands, symbols, and lyrics over and over and over again, the result is you, your brainwashing or mass mind control succeeds. And what you've done, the result is you change the values, the morals, the beliefs, and the politics and the identity of several generations of like 30 million young Americans and people from Britain and everywhere where they were programmed specifically, make no mistake about it, they were programmed specifically, their, the Christian religion was number one in being attacked, Christian sexual morals and Christian marriage was number two in being attacked, number three was uh, uh, Judeo-Christian moral values were attacked. Uh, number four was patriotism and nationalism was attacked and destroyed through this brainwashing process. And instead, you promoted in their mind control state um, the acceptance of Hinduism and Buddhism and Eastern mysticism and Satanism and the occult you promoted the use of drugs. You promoted free sex. If it feels good, do it. You you promote the total rejection of uh, traditional Christian moral values, and you replace them with humanism, evolution, and whatever feels good, do it. You created a counterculture, scientifically. Okay? And now we've seen several phases of that. So... There's two things you can do at this point. When you're confronted with the reality of what I just communicated with to you, a reality based on over 40 years of research, a reality based on my own personal experiences being in very high-level meetings with leaders of the counterculture where they discussed many of these things, where I, as a young boy, 15 years old in Manhattan, New York, uh, ended up hanging out with Dr. Timothy Leary, the LSD prophet from Harvard, and learning stuff about him and through him. When I uh, began to study the life of Ken Kesey, who the government turned on to LSD at Stanford Research University, and not only did I read his books and everything else, but I ended up uh, talking with him in Central Park, New York City, during a massive uh, 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 Peace Day celebration. Then um, I um, ended up, uh, I was personally involved in the New Age movement, but I intensively studied all of the scientists behind it. So I had an incredible background in science uh, that was that was behind all this thing. And when I um, moved from New York City to the University of Missouri in Columbia, I had a dual major. One, I was a film uh, making major. I was producing doc and writing documentary films. But my second major was in, in the brand new field of psychology, and it was called, this was my major, Altered, State, Altered States of Consciousness, where I studied scientifically from a high-level neuropsychiatrist, scientists, this, this, uh, the scientific aspects of uh, altered states of consciousness, drugs, meditation, the whole thing. Now, for years, I said to myself, what good is a degree in altered states of consciousness? It just dawned upon me relatively recently that without those unique studies, such as majoring in altered states of consciousness, I would never have been able to write the books I, I have written or understand the things that I understand without that rigorous academic education in altered states of consciousness. So, what is the bottom line? 
Well, we're going to get that in, into that in just a moment because everything that I've just talked about is based on scientific knowledge, God's uh, method of creating mankind, and in it, we learn that God has given each of us the power to control our minds, to control our world, to control our environment, if we sync up and obey the laws of God and renew our mind with the Word of God, the template that God created in Adam and Eve, that would we would be uh, uh, rule and reign on planet Earth, is supposed to be a mandate that every individual Christian in the church is using today, as we are in the middle of the greatest spiritual battle in the history of mankind, and America is ground zero in that spiritual battle. But the negative side is we either to you we either gain knowledge to use these principles to exercise dominion, to rule and reign, to occupy the land that Jesus Christ told us to occupy, or if we allow ourselves to be scientifically dumbed down. This advanced technology and science regarding mass mind control, etc., can be the very tools that a largely invisible scientific dictatorship uses against us, our friends, churches, our children, and grandchildren in their effort to program our children and grandchildren and young people in America into rejecting the Christian God and the Bible, to accepting the occult or uh, the worship of Lucifer, either overtly or covertly, to destroy the institution of Christian marriage, to destroy uh, the Bible and Christianity, uh, remove it, erase it from the minds and hearts of several generations. So through scientific mind control, they can be programmed to accept the ultimate goal of the globalist elite, which is to bring about a one-world government, a one-world religion, and a one-world economic system, the same one-world system described and warned about from God in Genesis 11 when he judges the first global society, which at that time is called Mystery Babylon. And then God warns us throughout Genesis 11, but in many other places in the Bible, including the book of Revelation, God warns us that in the last days, prophetically, this requires a knowledge of Bible prophecy, God is programming hundreds of millions of people, right as we speak, to embrace this lie or mythology that man can bring heaven on earth through um, um, a one-world government, a one-world religion, and a one-world economic system. So those words of John Lennon that they sing every time the ball is dropped on Times Square, you know, imagine there's no heaven, imagine there's no money, imagine there's no God, there's no, imagine there's no religion, imagine there's no war, imagine there's no a, a countries to die for. It all sounds so beautiful, doesn't it? John Lennon was simply nothing more than the programmed, yes, the, the mind-controlled program and puppet of the globalist elite. And he was raised up, probably didn't even realize he was raised up, but he was raised up to be a pop star that young people would worship and he would lead them like the Pied Piper into this new world order and, and sing about its virtues in a hypnotic sense, using repetition over and over again. You know, every New Year's Year Eve we hear it. Imagine there's no heaven. Imagine there's no religion. Imagine there's no God. Imagine there's no countries to die for. Imagine there's no money. All of that is word for word the game plan of a Luciferian, one world socialist government that will be secretly headed up by an occult elite or a Luciferian elite, and it will not be what it pretends to be. 
like all satanic lies, uh, it promises one thing but delivers something different. The communist revolution in Russia, the communist revolution in China and North Korea, every communist and socialist revolution, including the French Revolution, promised the people that if they followed their plan, that all wealth and money and power and position would be redistributed fairly. There would be no rich and no poor. Everything would be shared equally. That all your needs would be taken care of. You'd have free medical care. You'd always have a nice place to live. You'd always have a job. That's what they promised. In in addition, they promised what was called a worker's paradise. They promised that if you joined in their revolution, they would bring about uh, a kind of heaven on earth. And the state would look out for all of your needs, would totally take care of you, and everything would be done fairly and equally. That's the promise of the French Revolution, the Communist Revolutions, the Marxist Revolutions, and the Hardcore Socialist Revolutions. But because because, uh, all the young people have deliberately been scientifically dumbed down, like the millennials, I was reading today, they have been so dumbed down scientifically that the millennials don't even know what the Holocaust was. They didn't even know that there was a Holocaust that killed 7 to 8 million people in Nazi Germany. They don't know that. They, the millennials have been brainwashed into believing in communism and Marxism as a superior way for America to, to go. But of all these millions of millennials... None of them can tell you what communism and Marxism is really about. They can't explain the first thing about it. They know nothing about it. They simply believe it would be better for us. I mean, when you've made people that stupid, they have become highly dangerous because they can be led like pawns, like lambs to the slaughter. And all of this is done intentionally because what they want is evil, And they know the only way they can bring in this evil is to dumb down the masses of youth by dumbing them down in education, dumbing them down in the media, television, film, music, politics, education, just dumbing them down. And when people are dumbed down, they're compliant, they're easily manipulated, And they can be programmed to do absolutely anything, like murder, kill, wage war against their parents and their grandparents in the name of, you know, some wonderful globalist government. Don't think that can't happen. The only reason you would think that that can't happen is because you too have been dumbed down. You look at the communist revolutions, you look at the national socialist revolution, of the Nazi Adolf Hitler, and you see common elements that the government of these totalitarian regimes and dictatorships began brainwashing the youth day and night at the earliest ages. They would take the young people away from their parents, away from all parental influence, and they would begin to indoctrinate and brainwash the youth and young people into blindly believing in communism, socialism, Marxism, and, and the Nazi national socialism. They would brainwash the kids day and night. They would brainwash the kids to actually despise and hate their parents. They would brainwash the kids to turn their parents into the government, even if it meant the government would kill their parents. If they discovered their parents held views in opposition to, to the dictatorships. Their kids, their own kids, would be programmed to turn them in and where their p- parents would be killed. They would use these children as soldiers, men and women, to march through the streets with guns and knives and capture or arrest anybody who was resistant to this communist uh, globalist movement and 
they were prepared to kill their own parents or the parents of other kids they knew, uh, uh, make sure they were put on railroad cars to concentration camps where or re-education camps where they were worked to death or killed. That's the danger. When you dumb somebody down, you erase their mind and you can put any poison in their mind. That's what's going on right now. Now, you got to wake up. You can't pretend it's not happening. You have to learn the lesson that the Jews learned when they said, never again. They started out by saying it can't happen here. The Jews saw Adolf Hitler and the Nazis recruiting their own children and brainwashing their own children, teaching their own children to rat on their parents and to take them to concentration camps to be killed. The Jews heard rumors everywhere of fellow Jews having all their assets stolen, their women raped, and the men and women disappearing and being abducted abducted into concentration camps where they were killed. The Jews heard all these horrible things about what the Nazis were doing to the Jews, and it was all true. But the Jews could not bring themselves Mm. to believe it. And so uh, um, they kept saying it can't happen here. And in their state of denial and their inability to believe it, it happened right in front of them. But they were psychologically paralyzed from doing anything about it because of their hardcore denial and by saying it can't happen here. I mean, you had Jews literally lined up by the tens of thousands to go into uh, uh, the gas chambers in a concentration camp or the, or the showers, okay? And the people outside the, shower, the massive shower rooms were told by the Nazis that they were going to get a good shower and, and clean themselves with soap so they could be presentable and find jobs and be given new clothing. So the Jews were all very optimistic about this. They thought this was really great. They were so dumbed down, the Jews. They were in such a state of denial, they they couldn't see the obvious. Because what happened, the minute they went inside the door from the outside into into the shower room, they were still happy, smiling on their face, thinking they were going to get a shower and be clean. And then... Seconds later, out of the shower heads came out not warm or hot water, but poisonous gas. I think it was Zyklon B, which was made by a major German company, financed by Wall Street. And they were gassed to death. And then their dead bodies were secretly taken out the back, and and their dead bodies were naked, and they heaped them up in giant piles of naked human bodies, Uh, like human garbage, but they hid it from the Jews. So this would go on day after day after day. The Jews would hear rumors all the time, but they denied it. They happily were compliant. And, and, you know, by the time the Jews woke up, (laughs) seven million of them died in the concentration camps. The Christians were just as bad, the Protestants and the Catholics, because they actually voted for Hitler. Why? Why did they succeed? Because they were brainwashed. And when you're really under scientific mind control, you can't see the obvious. That is why you must ask yourself the question, what is my responsibility before God in the current hour that we live in, in the last days? What is my responsibility? Am I going to choose to gain knowledge as God commands me to? Am I going to choose to gain knowledge as God orders me to? Or am I going to allow myself to be brainwashed and dumbed down? And, and people make a choice. And what happens is uh, a huge percentage of people always choose um, to, be, to be brainwashed because they're frightened of the truth. Well... It's better to be frightened for a moment of the truth and do something and survive than to actually accept your brainwashing without questioning and go to your doom, okay? 
The Christians and Catholics voted Adolf Hitler in. They believed all his lies. Okay? That's what happened. It was horrible. The millennials don't understand this. Many American adults today can't remember this. That's why knowledge is power. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What One of the things we're trying to do in this ministry, Paul McGuire Ministries, is we feel a grave responsibility before the Lord to not only preach the gospel of salvation so that we can win souls to Christ and, and save as many people as possible. That's our first order of business, is to save souls. Then, to, to go into all the world and preach the gospel, to use every means of communication we have, film, television, uh, books, articles, videos, conferences, um, feature films, every method of communication possible. I have, we have dedicated for these purposes so that people would know the truth of salvation and that they would know the truth that would set them free. I am committed to that with every molecule in my being. It consumes me day and night. I have a burden for this that never leaves me. This burden has been on me since I, for, for as far back as I can remember. It's not a burden of, uh, of uh, oppression. It's a burden and a call and a conviction in my conscience by the Lord. It's a, it's a divine call from God where, where I feel the pull of God. I feel and know the call of God. To, to be one who chooses to, to make a difference, to do everything that I can with the power and influence that God has given me to spread the message of truth, both in terms of salvation and truth in every other area of life. Because it is, God tells us, it is not his will that his people perish. That's not the will of God, that his people perish, but that they become saved, delivered, and rescued. That's what salvation is on an eternal and a practical level. There's nowhere in the Bible, unless you misinterpret it, where it says American Christians or Christians of this nation or that nation have to go to, concentrate, have to, go to concentration camps, have to be tortured, and their entire nation taken over by totalitarian dictatorship. You know, there's a lot of Christians who are making those pronouncements in America, but that is, that doesn't mean it's the will of God for America. They're just offering up their opinion, and they need to be careful between the difference of offering up their opinion and 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 confusing people into thinking that they're making a prophetic announcement. You've got to be careful before you start saying, "Thus says the Lord, this is going to happen to America." The Lord has not said it to me, and I don't boast about visions and prophecies. I minister in those areas, but I do so with with a certain amount of reluctance. I don't want to embellish myself, and I always want to be honest. So I will simply tell you that after seeking the Lord, and I have experienced a supernatural vision, I could boast and exaggerate it, but I'm not going to. I've only experienced one supernatural vision. And in that vision, I saw a mighty revival being poured out across America after God's people repented. But God never said to me, Paul, this is going to happen exactly the way you see it. What he said to me was, Paul, this is my will for my people in America that a great revival would be poured out upon them, that they could occupy the land and turn the tide of the spiritual battle. And then, because they're repenting and seeking my face with all their heart, I can free them and free their nation from the, uh, the, the grasp of the demonic powers. But there first must be repentance and, and a, a turning around in their hearts. God didn't call me to pronounce some doomsday judgment over God's people. 
That may be the result if God's people don't repent and don't uh, turn around, but that's not the will of God. God clearly, how could that be the will of God? God said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's not God's will for his people to perish, but to have everlasting life. It's not God's desire to see America become like Nazi Germany or some communist China or communist Russia. That's not God's will. It's God's will to set the captives free. But it requires obedience and repentance on our part. So I don't pronounce judgment. I pronounce a sober message of if we obey God and repent and do what he tells us to do, we can reclaim our nation to a larger degree, for Jesus Christ, and these horrible things don't have to happen to us. But if we refuse to obey God, to repent and change our direction, then it is possible that these bad things will happen to us. But I never preach fatalism. That's a sin. Fatalism is a sin because it preaches hopelessness. And I'm here to to declare the truth in Jesus Christ according to his word. All right, we'll be back in a moment. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. And make sure you send archives of these programs to people everywhere that need to hear them. And uh, go to our Roku channel. Go to paulmcguire.us. Go to the Roku channel. And our Roku channel is called Paul McGuire Ministries. And you can see many, many hours of broadcast quality television programs we're doing, videos. We have all kinds of videos for you to watch, uh, thousands of pages of articles, tremendous books that you should get because they're being offered as a discount. And all of these are written for one purpose and one purpose alone, and that is to win people to Jesus Christ and to set the captives free. Visit paulmcguire.us. This is the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. Okay. The first thing you need to know for yourself, for your children, those that you love, you have to recognize that whether, you're, whether you understand it or not, you are the target of the incredible forces of scientific mind control, programming, brainwashing, social engineering, propaganda, persuasion, whatever you want to call it, but you are the target, okay? Why? Because the elite discovered about 100 years ago, through the work of Huxley and others, uh, B.F. Skinner, who uh, developed behavioral modification, where he literally put his his daughter in a box. It was called the, the Skinnerian conditioning box. So, And he, he believed in conditioning people like you would pigeons or animals by rewarding them with pellets or or giving them a little negative electrical charge that would be slightly painful to 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 reward or punish them and his idea was that you could control societies families individuals anything through behavior behavioral modifications with rewards and punishments built in Now, that sounds like a great idea, except for the fact that B.F. Skinner did not believe in God, did not believe in the dignity of man, okay, was warped, and literally locked his daughter in a Skinnerian conditioning box to experiment on her. Because he saw man as not having value, because he didn't believe man was created in the image of God. He believed man was just an animal, like Darwin said. Therefore, uh, it was perfectly acceptable to take man, which he viewed on the same level as like a donkey, and uh, set up all kinds of rewards and punishments. And that way you could control people and control society. Well, that's, <clears throat> that's kind of a glossful way of describing uh, mind control and brainwashing. But you see, what what B.F. Skinner is not telling you, (laughs) and neither are his fellow professors or the elite telling you, 
is that his forms of conditioning, reward and punishment, got a lot more evil and twisted than what I just described. That's like the public story. Dig a little deeper underneath the surface and find out just how far out he was willing to go to provide reward and punishments to control people, and it would terrify you about what he planned and implemented and other behavioral scientists planned and implemented. It's like Frankenstein cruelty in the area of reward and punishment. That's one methodology. The overall methodology was proposed by Huxley in the truly effective scientific dictatorship. Men will not even know that they're slaves, and they will learn to love all the duties they perform as slaves, they will learn to love their slavery. Sla- they will learn to love their slavery, and they'll be oblivious to the fact that they're slaves. That's where America is right now. Most Americans don't have any idea whatsoever that every thirty seconds of thought that plays through their heads at any given moment is the direct result of brainwashing conditioning subliminally and consciously through movies, through television, through music, through the mainstream media, etc., etc. Let me give you a challenge. Turn on any television show today, because it's never been worse than it is now. Any big name <clears throat> television show. Take, uh, let's say, for example, uh, Madam Secretary. Take the uh, new show with Rosanna uh, Barr. Take uh, Designated Survivor, where they they took the hero guy from whatever his original show was, and they made him into the the, the personification of a wimp. I mean, it's pathetic. Take... uh, any comedy show, any late-night comedy show, take movies, okay? Now, when you watch these programs, I want to give you a mental challenge. It's easy to do. You can make a game out of it. If you do this, you will quantumly raise your intelligence and your perceptive abilities. In fact, I can promise you, if you do this for a month, for a month you will double or triple or quadruple your brain power and the power of your perception and the powers of your analytical mind. Oh, I promise you that. That's how intense this stuff is. That's how fast it can work. What you do is you simply watch whatever TV shows and movies that you watch, but instead of going on to autopilot or cruise control, where you kind of like daydream and allow yourself just to be swept along by the storyline, okay, as those 10 HZ uh, EMF waves, electromagnetic frequency waves that emit from every television screen, <clears throat> you're being bathed in 10 HZ, which is called an alpha wave, and the specific characteristics of being exposed to an alpha wave is it puts you into a learning state. So that sounds good, doesn't it? Because it helps you focus, it helps you to learn, it helps you to absorb. In fact, it can actually help students learn if you play uh, uh, alpha wave music or 10HZ music in the background. The television is always emitting 10HZ. So you're always in the learning, passive, receptive remembering mode of consciousness. So you say, that's good. No, it isn't, because the the quirk of the 10HZ alpha wave is this. It, it gives you kind of a positive mental a- attitude. That's why people have this like happy, <clears throat> trance-like grin on their face when they're watching TV. It, it produces a certain amount of optimism, all right? It, it produces a desire to receive and to absorb whatever is being inputted into you, okay? But the downside is it turns off the other brain wave switches 
that are designed to empower your mind to question what is being broadcasted into you. It turns off the switches in the mind which activate the analytical part of you, the questioning part of you, the looking at the big picture part of you, the part of you that begins to notice, hey, there's a similarity between all these TV shows. I see. I, I seem to notice a pattern emerging from show to show. <clears throat> They're all subtly communicating through repetition over and over again, similar agendas. Okay? That's the way God normally created a healthy brain, a healthy mind, healthy intelligence, and healthy perception to function. All of those switches that turn on your perception, your scrutiny, your analysis, your questioning, uh, you're looking at the big picture, your uh, uh, analysis saying like, well, gee, these shows all seem to be promoting the same ideas. Those switches have to be on. They're given to you by God as a tool to help you survive, to help you avoid danger, to use spiritual discernment. When you allow psychologists and engineers to put you in front of a 50-inch flat-screen TV with full digital sound, which means it can broadcast to you sound that that is so multidimensional and digital that embedded in the soundtrack of, of, of a TV program or news or a movie, there, there is the regular broadcast of targeted 10HZ signals, uh, beta signals, delta signals, gamma signals, theta signals, and all of these play a different role in tuning your consciousness in or out, reducing or enhancing your ability to perceive what's really going on and questioning, 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 which is a normal God-given filter that you should always have. All right, now we're getting down to business. So the average American is just sucking everything in like a sponge. They're not even aware of what they're sucking in because they're in that compliant, I'll receive and believe anything, alpha state. That's the danger of the alpha state, 10HZ. So have a couple of, you know, espresso coffee. I'm serious, man. I mean, that'll, that'll uh, ramp up your, your dopamine levels. And your dopamine levels will give you some euphoria, but guess what? They'll put you into hypercritical focus and they'll reactivate your analytical, looking at the big picture, uh, perception modes. Now remember, the purpose of television and mind control is to dial down your perception modes and make you don't don't perceive or evaluate evaluate anything just take it all in like a sucker okay like a like a sponge now here's the problem when you begin to turn on your consciousness which god has given you the ability to turn on and activate your consciousness god has given you the ability to turn on and activate your perception when you're looking at television no longer from a dumbed down state of consciousness, which you were programmed to do, but you look at television from the state of consciousness, of higher consciousness, where you're using your critical thinking and analytical abilities, then you begin to question, dissect, and understand the motive and hidden agendas of what and why stuff is being presented to you through these dramatic uh, shows. And this is what you begin to see. You begin to notice, and listen very carefully, because this is going to wake, wake you up and smack you in the face, and you'll be thanking me for it, because it's like having cold ice water poured on a drunk. 
your perception will be turned on. When you're in your normal God-given state of heightened perception, you notice very quickly when you watch TV, watch movies, mainstream media, you notice patterns, repetitive patterns that all give the exact same message from different characters said in different ways, but they're all communicating in total agreement the same political messages, the same ideological messages, economic messages, uh, messages about the family and society are all the same, and you're being conditioned because it's being repeated to you over and over and over again. So, you notice <clears throat> that on one television show, that must have been produced a week or two ago, I think it was CSI, I think it was CSI, you know, one of these detective shows. And here was the thing. It couldn't have been produced all that long because, you see, one thing you do when you watch television or movies, you use your analytical uh, ability. You deliberately choose to remember the big issues that are going on in the news especially regarding President Trump and his policies, which are hated by the media. And you begin to think about Trump's policies and what is he doing or planning to do during the time you watch this television show, okay? Because sometimes they produce it weeks in advance. So by the time they release the TV show, it's designed to shape your thinking and belief for, for example, about something that Trump is trying to do. So right now the big hoopla is <clears throat> the uh, border patrol, the lack of effectiveness of the walls down there by the, the border. Okay, that's, that's front and center in the news, and there's all kinds of very aggressive debates. Uh, you have Trump calling for the National Guard to go down there because Trump and his administration are alleging that that deliberately criminals, uh, radical activists, drug dealers, <clears throat> and revolutionaries are deliberately being put at the front of the line with counterfeit IDs with the intention of flooding not just your ordinary um, uh, Hispanic couple or family from some of these nations, but but they're not just coming from Mexico, they're coming from all these countries deeper in South America, going around the long way, and then coming in uh, from the Mexican-U.S. border. But <clears throat> they have discovered that many of these people, in fact, a huge percentage of them, are gang members, are revolutionaries. They're coming in with guns and bombs, and their intent is to come into the United States and act as revolutionaries with physical violence. I'm not saying all of them, but a disturbingly large percentage are. In addition to that, it's said that <clears throat> this is all part of a bigger action which involves a plot uh, where certain high-level political powers uh, created a situation to deliberately invite the United Nations and United Nations military forces in at the U.S.-Mexican border for the purpose of overruling the United States and uh, creating a, a pretense that will allow for the entrance of armed U.N. troops to pour into the United States and for the armed UN troops then <clears throat> can exercise illegal authority over American citizens where you have United Nations soldiers from all around the world heavily armed and they're ordering around and they're ruling over American citizens, which is against the Constitution. Now, Think about that for a moment. So then you watch all these television shows, and very, very craftily, you see all these subplots in the shows. 
of, for example, you know, a, a little girl whose father died, who's an honest, hardworking guy, but he had to end up with a, a, a mob in South America that was uh, smuggling in, you know, like uh, anti-tank missiles or whatever. And all of a sudden, all these themes pop up about walls, immigration, uh, criminals, uh, and then uh, the major thing is is portraying all the innocent people that are being negatively impacted by our intensified immigration laws. Then you see all these television programs and movies coming out this week and last week about <clears throat> the need for gun control and presenting a very one-sided view of the need for gun control, taking away all the guns from the U.S. citizens to protect themselves, and um, uh, letting U.N. troops come in to to keep the peace, etc., etc. So then you notice that whenever you want to know what is the viewpoint politically or socially uh, that they want to... Uh, sell you, that they want to put on a higher level, that they want you to believe, you will notice this pattern over and over again on every television show, that the most popular, attractive, and stars or heroes of, of every single television show, the characters that are the stars, the best looking, the smartest, the ones that people look up to, the role models and the heroes, they will always be used to communicate uh, the lines which uh, are trying to sell the American public on the direction that the elite want the average American to go in, to to go with. In other words... Just look at what the hero, the handsome guy, the beautiful girl, the most popular characters in a show, look at what they are saying, and when they're speaking even remotely about a political, cultural, social <clears throat> agenda, you, can be- you better can believe that, that what they're saying is the official position of the elite and the powers that be. And it, it, you notice the pattern. It's over and over and over and over again. Whereas the position that they're trying to destroy, the position that they're trying to lower, the belief that they're trying to destroy, the belief that they're trying to, to say is stupid or evil, you can always f- identify those beliefs because they will be spoken by the actors or actresses <clears throat> or characters that play the role of the dumb people, the stupid people, the loser, the one with all the neurosis and psychological hang-ups, the lower-ranking people, uh, the people that are not the people that don't come across as having integrity, the people that don't come across as having uh, um, ability or sanity, the people who are deliberately come off as religious nuts, sexual perverts, weirdos, those are the characters which will always be speaking about the language, the ideas, and the agendas that they that they want to destroy in the minds of the American public. And you'll see this with precise repetition no matter what show you watch. <clears throat> and it, you can count on it. And when, once you see it, your eyes will be so opened up <clears throat> that your minds will be blown. Because you'll realize just how continuous this bombardment is. How continuous and overwhelming this this all-out effort is to control your mind by planting in your mind an ever-continuing subconscious association. The losers, the unattractive people, 
the people who are not the stars, the people who are not the role models, the people that that um, you know are are not people that the people want that they don't want to identify with. These are the people that will inevitably uh, be saying the things that they want to destroy. Case in point is, it's obvious that the elite um, want to confiscate guns all across the board from every American family, no matter what. They want to take away all the guns. That's their agenda, okay? So, you'll notice in every television show, every news story, every sitcom, the following thing always happening, no matter what show you turn to, you will notice that the actors that are the most popular, the stars, the most intelligent, the attractive ones, the role models, the heroes, they will always be speaking lines, even if it's a one-sentence line, they will always be speaking lines that promote gun control and stricter gun control laws and taking away of guns from the common people all the time. Conversely, People that are gun nuts, irresponsible, drunks, stupid, uh, would end up shooting somebody accidentally. People who are borderline crazy or outright crazy, religious nuts, uh, political extremists, they are always the ones that will speak language in a, uh, uh, you know, television movie or a television series They're the ones that will always speak the language of pro-guns. We need to keep automatic assault rifles. And they will be an act irresponsibly pro-gun, no restrictions, and basically make irresponsible statements, conduct irresponsible actions that the average person watching the show they will view these people as not being authority figures, not being people we should look up to. They have no credibility. And so there's a very powerful subconscious message being bombarded in your head. People who are for no gun control, people who are for pro-guns, Uh, people who are for uh, keeping your assault rifles and everything else, they will all, the people who promote those ideas will always be the characters on the show that people do not look up to as role models. They will be uglier, stupider, they will be quirky, they will be crazy, they will be nuts, they will be extremists, and they will have no credibility. Okay? The ones that want to promote gun restriction laws or gun bans, etc., will always be <clears throat> communicated by the heroes of the show, the people that people look up to, more attractive, more intelligent, <clears throat> and play roles of characters that people admire. The net result is you're now watching, over the course of a year, you could say 50 different television shows including television movies or outright movies or episodic TV. And you'll notice that the exact same formula for writing is consistent no matter what show you're watching. It's the same message spoken by the same types of people. What is the cumulative effect over a period of time? The cumulative effect over a period of time is... In your subconscious mind, you are being indoctrinated to believe through constant repetition that only people that are nuts, losers, not attractive, out of touch, crazy, extremists, quirky, the people you make fun of, it's only those people that want to uh, uh, keep guns free and accessible to the American people. So subconsciously, you whether, whether you're pro-gun or anti-gun, subconsciously, your mind is being manipulated to a believe that only nuts and extremists and crazies and, and people with no integrity are for the promotion and, 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 the, and keeping guns legal. 
That's the subconscious imprint in your mind. And subconsciously, you're programmed in your mind that the people who are smart, with it, intelligent, attractive, the stars, the heroes, the role models, are all for increased gun banning and gun control. Now, this is not a logical argument. It's not a rational argument. What it is, is below the surface of your conscious mind, your subconscious mind is being deeply programmed to associate any message of uh, pro-guns, keeping guns legal, making guns available, responsible use of gun ownership, your subconscious is now programmed to believe that only weirdos, extremists, religious crazies, uh, right-wing fanatics, people with personality uh, disorders, only those kinds of people agree with that position. And your brain is programmed to also believe that the more responsible, attractive, the heroes, the role models, and the stars of the show, they're all for restricting guns. So what happens? In the arena of your subconscious mind, you're not thinking rationally now. You are brainwashed. So before you even begin to think about the issue, your subconscious mind has already made the decision for you. Because you have been brainwashed into believing nuts believe in pro-guns, responsible, attractive heroes and stars believe in uh, restrictions on guns. Therefore, because I am insecure, I'm speaking hypothetically, and I don't have an identity of my own, then I'm going to side on the side of the positive role models, the stars of the show, the people who are more attractive, because I want to be viewed like one of them, and I don't want to be viewed by my friends like a religious nut or an extremist. It's that simple. You're in deep, deep down internal decision is no longer made on any rational argument. You are making it totally out of a desire a childlike desire, reawakened to be emotionally, emotionally motivated uh, to be in the positive peer group. All right? I mean, that's just one example out of many. That's modern mind control. And it works. It works among intelligent adults. It works among Christians. It works among everybody. And this is just one tiny example of it. But it shows you the all-pervasive, all-encompassing power of a massive media industrial complex that uses its massive influence, its star power, its writers, its directors, its actresses and actresses, uh, its mainstream media journalists, its late-night comedians, movie stars. They're all selected, they're all promoted on the basis of their political social beliefs. And if their beliefs line up with the goals of the elite, they will go far, they will be honored. If you dare to buck the system and say something conservative or say you're for for guns, they will destroy your career, they will come after you, and you will be demonized as uh, a psychotic nut. That's how powerful brainwashing is. And you need to recognize that having intelligence in and of itself is not enough to protect you from it. Even if you recognize these dynamics that I just outlined for you, which are all dynamics of mind control, the only way you can be set free from mind control is to, with God's help, renewing your mind with the Word of God, but you must spend just as much time as you do bombarding yourself with mind control messages, you must spend just as much time educating yourself as to how the process of mind control works 
and exactly what you need to do to set your mind free from mind control and indoctrination. When you do that, then you can realize all your untapped um, <clears throat> potential. When you do that, you can enhance your perception, your brain power, your analysis, your critical decisions. When you do that, You are then choosing to reprogram yourself and you are building and releasing the the positive God-given identity that God has placed inside you. And when you release that positive God-given identity that God has placed inside you, powerful psychological energy, the spiritual energy from God, the spiritual energy from truth, and their there then releases a flood biochemically produced by your consciousness, because your consciousness is the collection of all your thoughts, emotions, decisions, and perceptions. You become an activator of this life force, both on a spiritual dimension but on a psychological, biological dimension, you become someone who is infused with not only spiritual energy, but the energy of activating your perception, enhancing your intelligence, uh, bringing alive the truthfulness and power and clarity of your identity, What happens on a subconscious level, what happens on the level of what science calls epigenetics, what happens on the level of electromagnetic frequencies, because remember, every cell processes electromagnetic frequencies, and every thought, every memory, every perception involves the transmission, the release, the storage, the focusing of electromagnetic energies, also known as your bioenergetic field. So, have you ever walked into a room <clears throat> where you've met somebody with incredible charisma? Well, what happens is they radiate a power around them that is unspoken, but the energy they carry because of who they've chosen to be literally resonates a force field, a a projection of intelligence, greatness, favor, creativity that everybody can feel in the room. They may not speak about it openly, but they can sense it the minute that person walks through the room. I'll give you one final example. Uh, During my entire life, there have been those notable occasions when I have been in a room or stood next to somebody who possessed this unusual power, this unusual uh, charisma, this unusual emanation of bioenergetic energy. And I'm thinking about, for example, the time that I was very near President uh, Ronald Reagan. And I don't think he was elected yet. But the minute I came near him by a few feet away, I could feel such a projection of power radiating from him, such a projection of energy radiating from him, that I knew instantaneously in my spiritual man, I knew this was the next president of the United States because he carried that He projected it from his DNA and his consciousness. I have met other people of of a similar stature uh, stature in in political life or cultural life. Not the crooks, not the slimy ones, but the ones of integrity, the ones of greatness. They too, when they would walk in a room or walk past you, they would, they would project such a massive amount of energy that everybody took notice. And I've also been in rooms <clears throat> where people that nobody recognized who they were, but they would walk in a room 
and the room would go silent and you would know every single person was looking at that individual, not because they were the most beautiful or the most handsome, not because of uh, how expensive their attire was, not for any necessarily specific natural reasons, but they carried an energy with them. They carried a presence with them, which was larger than life, and everybody uh, uh, could, could sense it, all right? The same thing happens when you meet people before or after whose life and whose actions have changed the destiny for good <clears throat> uh, of, of history in our world. They carry with them that power, that unspoken power, which enabled them to be used by God to change destiny. You can sense they are people of history. Now, this is not about worshiping human beings. This is about reckon, recognizing that God created us in his image. And when our thoughts, our aspirations our motivations, the purity of our heart, what we embrace, what we believe in, why we do the things we do, when, when those kinds of things are arranged from the perspective of God in the right order, and God chooses to, to synchronize to a higher degree with this individual, there is a resonation of frequencies, and I believe they're electromagnetic frequencies because that's how every one of our cells operate. And they project a field, a force field, if you will, that is <clears throat> noticeable to perceptive people. And almost what is always the case that this force field they project is either one that carries the energy of evil with it, and you can feel evil, or it carries the energy of the field of good and God with it. What I'm trying to tell you is you are more than the sum of your parts. God has created you in a way that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You can be born again. God has given you a consciousness. Your consciousness is what you choose to think about. Remember your attitudes, your willingness to forgive or non-forgive, the bigness of your dreams, the purity of your ambitions, the motive of your heart. This puts you in a synergistic relationship with God. And God created you in his own image. In addition, you have a epigenetic field, which teaches us that scientifically what, what you're holding in your consciousness has the power to, to modify uh, and re-engineer your DNA, uh, your genetic code, so that the power of your consciousness, <clears throat> then it is that which determines your intelligence your ability, your IQ, your brain power, your gifting, your physical size, your muscular strength, not just merely the natural means of your genetic code. It's your consciousness. It's the composite on a multidimensional level of who, who you are that, 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 that generates the power or the life force or the bioenergetic field that transforms the reality around you, it transforms people around you, and it transforms your biochemical be being on all kinds of levels. You see, right here, okay, we're not, we're not stepping into the area of the New Age. No, 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 no. Right here, we're stepping in to the kingdom of God, and we're stepping into that place in history at this very moment where we, as multidimensional men and women created in the image of God, intersect with God's laws of science, 
physics, biology, intelligence, uh, and many other factors. Okay? There is a reason why Jesus Christ, yes, of course, he was the Son of God, but he carried an anointing upon him that was so powerful from the Holy Spirit. When, when that woman uh, had that condition which caused her to issue forth blood, she pressed through the crowd, and the minute she touched the hem of Jesus Christ's garment, she could feel the power of the virtue of Christ move from his garment through her hand into her body, and she knew instantaneously she was supernaturally healed because the life force of Jesus Christ was transmitted from his body through his clothing into her body and made her completely whole. And in fact, Christ himself noticed it and said, who touched the hem of my garment? Because I felt the virtue of God, <clears throat> somebody placing a demand upon me, which released the virtue of God. Now, Jesus was the Son of God, and this revolves the dunamis power of God, the dynamite power of God, the Holy Spirit. But it brings us to, to an encounter with an opportunity to operate at a kingdom level, not merely a natural level. And I'll summarize today's program with a challenge and by saying this. I have been around or I've been in places where I have been able to perceive, and quite often you just bump into it, you know, you don't realize what you're heading towards. I have been in the presence of people that are highly charged with power, but it is clearly a demonic and an evil power because the The projection of the energy that they send out is, yes, very powerful, but very dark and very demonic, okay? And they change the atmosphere. They change people around them by the projection of their evil power. They they reconfigure reality and tip it in the favor of the demonic and Lucifer, Somewhere along the line, they must have given themselves over to Lucifer. And it's very dangerous to watch this, because what they have is infectious. Now, I have also been in places, environments, rooms, where somebody walks in, and they don't announce whether they're a Christian or not. They don't even necessarily say, quote, Christian things. But they are so infused with the power of God and they are projecting the energy of God and the Spirit of God with such power and such a purity <clears throat> as they resonate the frequency of God at, at such a crescendo that it literally pulverizes and obliterates those people who are transferring uh, the power of demonic darkness into the world. It, it, it blows them out of the way. It constrains them. They pull back or they run back from fear because the power emanating from the individual who's transmitting the power of God is so vastly superior to the person who has yielded themselves to the power of darkness that their darkness is defeated. So what is needed now in America more than ever before, what is needed in families <clears throat> and homes and churches and people using the media is this. We need there to be literally armies of the living God, armies of the love of God, armies of the light of God, people who have been in proximity and have been infused with the life force of God. They've been infused with the spirit of God, the dunamis power of God, to such a level that their mere presence transforms the realities that they enter or transforms the realities that they write into through books and articles or speak into through radio programs or television programs. You see, the 
ultimate power of the ministry of Jesus Christ is way beyond our normal uh, physical senses. It actually involves our personal communion and encounter with Jesus Christ in which we are infused with power from on high, which is multidimensional power, and it is power from the kingdom of God. When we have been infused with the power of God, our internal nature is changed. Our neurological uh, wiring is rewired. Our bioenergetic field is is ramped all the way up. Um, what we project through uh, epigenetics and uh, the the force of the life force of God, what we project to other people uh, through media, uh, through our presence, through being in a particular place, it causes a a uh, spiritual revolution that is not seen or understood by the human ear or the human eye. It is one, this spiritual revolution, that is recognized immediately by anybody who walks in a supernatural relationship with Jesus Christ because from out of their inmost being flows rivers of living water. And what happens is the power of God, the presence of God that is being released into that moment is so awesome, it overturns the balance of power that is being uh, projected uh, by those who have chosen to be transmitters or agents of the power of Lucifer in the kingdom of darkness. There's an instantaneous uh, overthrow of the illegitimate demonic power by the glorious presence of God and the projecting of the dunamis life force of God. You see, it's out of the context of this internal revolution spiritually that souls are saved, people are healed, politics are changed, lies are dissolved in the minds of people, healing of people in the deep areas of their woundedness occurs, healing of people on the physical level from diseases occurs. You see, when you move from the arena of physical senses and you step into the, to the very axis of final reality, it's there and only there that you tap into and you unleash the revolutionary resurrection power of the living Christ. On that, I want to say God bless you. This is your servant in Christ, Paul McGuire. Join us in partnering uh, with reaching people all around the world with this message. This is the kind of message that changes the lives and destinies for people forever. And we are able to present this message because you have chosen to obey the Lord and to join us as intercessory prayer warriors, to use your creative abilities to help us communicate this message far and wide. And for those of you who seek God and ask him how you can contribute financially with your donations and gifts. So I thank all of you. This is Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us.